Hello and welcome to our third QBL Conversations. Um, I'm joined today with Valerie Goodwin. Valerie is a longtime QBL faculty member and we always really enjoy having Valerie come and teach for us at QBL. And uh, we missed her this year, so she's, jo she's joining us from her home studio. Valerie, how are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. How about you? I'm doing okay. Um, we That's are back good. at the Art Center, um, so we're working to get our first exhibit of the year going. But um, we're really missing everyone at QBL, and you would yes, I miss being there. I really was looking forward to it. So, tell us a little bit about the class you would have been teaching. What would you have been doing this week? All right, uh, I was going to be teaching a um, kind of independent study kind of a studio class um, and I was really looking forward to it because I you know I do a lot of critique for a living as a as a faculty member uh, at our school of architecture and um, I just thought that it would be great if I could bring some of that format and some of that knowledge and way of talking about to the class that I would be teaching um, for you guys at um, at UBL. Yeah, I look forward to, to sort of looking at what people wanted to do um, on their own and sort of to um, be a second eye and maybe just having um, different kinds of more and more substantive conversations about what the student's intent was and, and talking about how they might, if they might move forward. And it would be um, a more relaxing, kind of a self-guided, guided, approach to teaching and uh, I'm sorry that it's not going to happen this year. Yeah and for those of you who don't know about what Valerie does she is a professor of architecture and she incorporates a lot of architectural um, designs and imagery and maps into her own work and she has a very wonderful beautiful approach to quilt making that produces really beautiful results. Um, and I can see in the background that you have some very cool things in the works. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on behind you? Uh, sure. The piece that you see right there, um, that's one of my latest pieces. I've, I've worked on it off and on during the school year for about maybe something over 12 months. And it was really about being improvisational and just working with the material. And uh, it is composed of uh, a variety of laser cut map lines that um, I saw by searching the globe. And I just picked certain lines that, uh, that spoke to me in kind of, a, kind of a lyrical way. And I started by just layering them on top of one another concealing and re revealing certain parts, painting over others. After I would get them all laid out and somewhat stitched, I would actually put it on the laser cutting bed and then cut into that piece and then layer on top of it. So I just decided I was gonna give myself permission to fail on this piece in order to kind of learn and see what the technology could do for me. And the other thing that I, I enjoyed about this piece is that I was able to work um, by hand, analog, and also to work using technology, and that's using um, both sides of my brain, and that's sort of the way we're trained to, to think about design and architecture. I like that you mentioned giving yourself permission to fail. I, I think about that a lot, and when, when I also taught, I would tell students, so you've done this process and you succeeded at it and why, you could do it again. Why not do it again and push just a little further and see what else could happen? I'm curious as to how you would see that playing out maybe in the class you would have been teaching at QBL. Um, how do you see failure when it comes to quilt making in, in your students? Uh, I think students are afraid to fail and they don't realize that that is really an important part of the design process and the growth process. And so we would have had some discussions about that. And we, we may have looked at other works of art or works of architecture where the, the designer 
had to kind of succeed through the failure process. Um, and so that's, that's one of the ways I would have brought that into class. I was about to say your background is a bit odd for uh, coming to quilt making, but then it occurred to me that actually seems to go together quite well. How did you, how did you come to your quilt practice from the other realm? Well, it's interesting that you use the word odd. Um, I had one well-known quilt artist say that my work was idiosyncratic, which I didn't know if I should take that as a criticism or a compliment. But anyway, I, I sort of got into quilt making through architecture. Um, but let me step back. I, I'd learned to, uh, to sew back in the 60s. I grew up in Connecticut, and every summer, uh, my father would bundle his four daughters and my mother in the car, and we would travel across the Mason-Dixon line, and we would visit um, his family and my mother's family. They, both, they lived in adjacent cities in Alabama. And my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was a home ec teacher, and she taught me how to sew. And um, my mother began to let me sew for my sisters. And um, I did that up until maybe high school, and then I sort of decided it wasn't a cool thing to do anymore. Uh, so I didn't really sew again until, um, I guess, about 1998 or so. So that's more than 30 years later. Uh, and the way I got into it was I was reading the uh, Journal of Architectural Education, and I was reading about um, how a, a female um, a uh, professor of architecture had her students uh, study traditional quilt blocks. And for some reason, that that notion just kind of struck me. I, I became very interested in seeing how I could incorporate that into the curriculum. At that time, I was teaching a beginning design students. And when you're teaching beginning designers, you can sort of teach a more broader kind of array of um, design ideas, design fundamentals. So I use um, quilt blocks, quote unquote, as a way to teaching about color and pattern and how things are organized and so on. And I did this for a while and I started, did a little bit more of it in, in uh, sophomore level studio. And finally I decided, well, why am I doing this and I don't even know how to quilt? And so I took a six week class at our local community college and I made a sampler quilt. And I just knew immediately that I wanted to use this medium to kind of express uh, ideas about architecture. And so um, I began to try and use traditional quilt making techniques and I found that to be pretty restrictive. And I took a class at uh, QSBS and I learned about fabric collage and that just opened up a whole new way of working and being more uh, expressive with my work. Just as I was saying, oh, it's odd that you came from architecture, I, it popped into my mind. Quilt blocking can be this bird's eye view um, and really look a lot like city planning. And you definitely use that to your advantage. You play with perspective in some of your quilts. And mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, where you get your imagery and um, some I some of the ideas and imagery that you play with? Yeah, so I was traveling somewhere in an airplane. I looked down and I saw um, a, a, a farm, crop, crop circles, and the way things were planted and how they were organized. And that served as inspiration for me for one of my early quilts. And this was when I was using traditional quilt making techniques. But I gradually realized that I really did like the networks and the lines and the shapes that you would see when you're looking overhead. And I realized that I was really attracted to uh, aerial views of places. And that sort of crept into, um, into my work gradually. Yeah. Um, what's next um, in far, as far as like the work, where you see your work going? What's next? Well, the fabulous laser cutter that I had access to on campus. I'm not sure I'm going to have access to it. 
So I'm going to invest in laser cutter. They have hobby laser cutters. And so I plan on getting one of those this fall. And um, I just hope to be able to just to kind of um, approach my work in the same way that I described to you earlier on in terms of the way that I did the piece that you see right behind me. So I've realized I have maybe two different ways of working. I work um, by just sort of uh, improvising, but I also have certain uh, pieces where I am very, it's very well and tightly, tightly composed. And so um, I plan to work in both ways um, next. And also, I found that I have some compelling things I want to say about what's going on in the world right now. And so I have some narrative pieces that, um, well, one is in the works right now, and then one is sort of uh, on the drawing board. Well, that's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about what those are, what what they're going to be? One of them um, has to do with um, the leadership we have in D.C. and the Black Lives Matter movement, George Floyd. And I use maps and certain figures in the story to tell, um, to, to convey how I feel about what's happening. Uh, I don't know if any exhibits will show it because it's probably a little bit too controversial, but it's just something I felt compelled to do. And then I have another piece that I'm working on that is about the worldwide COVID uh, crisis. And um, so it's different because I'm working more with shapes than lines, because I'm dealing with the land masses across the globe and and sort of trying to track like, where the virus is has grown, has gone, and sort of trying to convey the sense of urgency, especially what's happening here in our country with with the, um, with the violence. Well, I can't wait to see them both. I I know that your um, craftsmanship and the way that you use symbolism is beautiful. Um, even Thank in you. when you take on subjects as simple as like fruit cells, <laughs> you have a quilt. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love the banana. So I can only imagine how great these are going to be. How have you been doing since the quarantine? I know you've been teaching a lot from home and uh, probably working in your studio, but um, how have you been since all this came down? Uh, well, I will say um, that last semester, about the middle of March, of, yes, middle of March, we were all told that um, classes would not be held uh, on campus anymore, and we had to learn to teach via Zoom, the exact way you and I are talking. And uh, that was really a challenge. Um, and uh, it was such a challenge, and also because of certain health um, situations that I have to deal with, uh, I decided to retire early. I was going to teach this fall. So actually, officially, um, my retirement date is August the 7th. Although right now it feels like I am retired because generally speaking, I don't teach in the summer anyway. So it's given me a chance to realize how much I'm going to miss teaching and interacting with students. It's, it's made me realize that how much I will rely on being able to teach old artists to get that sort of interact, interaction and satisfaction of, you know, of conveying some of my design approaches with other, other people. And um, I have just been given the blessing of being able to work in my studio just about every day. And I hadn't really had that chance to do that before without thinking about, okay, I've got this semester coming up. I got it get prepared for that. So it's really been a joyful um, transitional period for me. Well, we certainly miss you. Um, you guys should check out Valerie's website if you're not already familiar with her work and sign up for a class. Uh, we will be having her. Follow me on Instagram. Yes. Actually, Valerie has a very interesting Instagram. She curates in a lot of really beautiful other, other works of art as well as her own. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so stay connected with Valerie and definitely sign up for one of her classes. If you see her teaching, she's a wonderful teacher. And hopefully we can see you next year, Valerie. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you.